started back in 84 with a, uh, a Tasmanian fisherman, Tony Briggs, found of the business and with a, an old Fairmile wall chaser uh, vessel. We started in our home base, Townsville moved up to Cairns just because it was a, a stronger sort of tourism economy in Cairns. And then in 1986, we commissioned the Coral Princess One, which was a small 35 metre cap, to explore into the Kimberley region and pioneered the Kimberley. In our 40th year, we have a, a modern fleet of three vessels. The Coral Discoverer, which is our smallest and our oldest ship in the fleet. She was first commissioned in 2005, had a big refit in 2018. The Coral Adventure was built in 2019. So they knew what they wanted the vessel to achieve and they knew how to go about getting it done. The Coral Geographer, fairly new. She was only uh, built in 2020 and we got her in service in 2021. She's a very beautiful, capable ship. I, I think we would be the only cruise company that actually has designed all of our ships, has built all of our ships and owns all of our ships. Over the years, word of mouth spread about what an immersive experience that people could have. The beauty of expedition cruising is small ships, a small number of guests, and then getting to faraway places, whether that's tribal villages in Papua New Guinea, or it's traditional owners in Cape York, or it's fishing communities along the west coast of Australia. You really get good relationships and good trust with the locals. So every time we visit, we get that access, we get to places that other operators would not get to because we've got that trust with the locals. Wherever there's a, a remote adventure to be had, that's generally where we like to go. And I, and I guess that's a, our story. Uh, yeah, we, we've pioneered all of the regions that we go to. Our style of cruising that we look at is immersing ourselves into the environment that we're travelling in. The shallow draft of the vessel is obviously a key feature in expedition cruising. It enables us to get up into anchorages that are otherwise inaccessible by a deeper draft vessel. So we need a lot of control over the maneuverability of the vessel. It's a diesel electric vessel. And uh, the reason we have this arrangement of diesel electric is just because of the places where we go. That gives us the, the ability to run additional engines for our needs. And that's possible with the system. We've got all the full capabilities of the ASI pool propulsion. So highly manoeuvrable, highly capable ship. The combined power of all three engines, it's just under 5,000 horsepower, which is a lot of power for the vessel of this size. It's not like the old vessels where you, you would find grease all over. <laughs> As you might have noticed, the engine room is quite pristine. A lot of the navigating that we do is in, in open waters, and I like to encourage the guests to come to the bridge and converse with the officers of the watch. A lot of the guests like to see what we do. What better place to enjoy that than the place that's designed to give you the best view of it. You come up and see all the action. There's a whole lounge up there and ask questions. So it is a big part of expedition cruising. The guests really enjoy seeing what happens up there in the business end. Uh, Mate, happy to bring down the Explorer all the ships in the Coral Expeditions fleet, they feature Explorer tenders. They're located on the back of the vessel and they're boarded from deck level. We are one of the only companies in the world that have the Explorer system. The ability to walk on board from the lower deck, seat safely, and they lower the whole outfit into the water is just, in my experience, quite unique. So, well done to the designers and away they go for the expedition. They, they take you off the boat and you experience something that you've never experienced before. We have a very shallow draft which allows us to get in very close and drop all of our guests right onto the tracks that they're going to go on. And then they'll zip around to get a more up close and personal experience. Our explorers have two very powerful engines, so we can get to places pretty quickly. They also have clears on the side in case there's bad weather, and then obviously the roof which protects you from the sun. There's a platform at the front which comes down, and the guests can walk straight off onto the beaches or wherever we are landing. A very easy experience for the guests. 
We also have a fleet of Zodiacs on board. Best of both worlds there. It means then we're able to access reefs or some of the waterways to either snorkel in, swim in. And get amongst the environment in finite detail using those Zodiacs. We're very considerate about the places that we visit and the communities and the environment. The company has been a part of Ecotourism Australia as an advanced ecotourism operator and recently in late 23 received our Hall of Fame status for that program. You know, we also do some, some great community partnerships around the country and the places that we visit. In and around Cairns, we're a long-term partner of the Turtle Rehabilitation Centre. We've got a long-standing partnership with Australian Geographic and the Australian Geographic Society. For that partnership, we, we do four trips each year. We we co-curate and we get some people from the society to come on board as special guest lecturers. We also sponsor the Nature Photographer of the Year contest and the winner of that wins travel with us for the destination of their choice. So we really value that, that partnership as well as the, the many others we have. The guests are getting a natural connection with the destination but they're also tasting that destination in a glass and on a plate. We source from the best suppliers. Whether it's seafood or whether it's meat, fresh fruit, we try and implement whatever we can from that particular area and, and adapt the menus around that. The guests really appreciate that because they don't want to travel through the Philippines, for example, and eat roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, you know. We mainly use the dining room, which is where we have most of the meals. And we'll have a meal during the trip upstairs uh, on the Vista deck, which is like our fresco dining area. We'll host a cocktail hour every day, or we'll try to, depending on how the excursions are going. We may have canapes and wine tasting in the evening. And we always try to marry the culinary experience to the wine experience. We have barbecue evenings, a lovely setting. That one's one of our most laid back services. We have beach drinks in certain locations cookery demonstration. We'll run through a particular recipe or dish. The food is superb. There's always a choice. It's a great time to get to, to talk to people and to find out more about them. Between breakfast, lunch and dinner, we've got to sit down with everybody on the cruise so far and uh, it's been wonderful. After dinner, we'll have the opportunity for a movie. We also do games nights. Up here is the Bridge Deck Lounge and this is where we do all of our lectures that relate to what region we are visiting. Stringing bark. This, this thing is very powerful. Bush medicine. And we talk and chat with the guests. We'll do a quiz night. We'll also do stargazing. Every day is just so exciting. Not only have we been considerate about the design of the ships and how they work for expedition, we, we thought that it would be really authentic for us to look at procuring artwork through the ship from the regions that we travel. In the guest rooms, there's photography. All of that photography has been taken by expedition leaders on actual coral expeditions trips. So it's a beautiful story that surrounds guests during their travels. We have a couple of different categories of rooms. We have our suites, which is our largest rooms on board. So you have a living area as well as a bedroom and then your bathroom with the only baths on board and then their own personal large balcony. And then you'll go down a level, standard state rooms with balconies. Down another level, you won't have balconies, but you still have a standard state room size. And then a little bit smaller rooms, but you'll have portholes instead of like a larger picture window. We service twice a day. We do a full detail clean in the morning and then in the evenings they'll come in again. So two cleans a day keeps things pretty tidy. One of the big parts of Coral Expeditions is us being Australian flagged and that means that we've got the big red ensign that's out the back of the ship and that means that all our crew are Australian, some from different parts of the world but they're all Australian and that's a big part of the experience on board. We have a very relaxed culture on board. We too try to be formal during our evening services, but if you're not too keen on being formal, you don't have to be. We just do it the Australian way, so there's no, there's no jackets, there's no ties, there's no real formalities with quality, but without fleshiness. We tend to get to know them a bit more, because we're a smaller vessel as well, so we're normally talking to them a lot more and see them around. We often have returning passengers which makes the experience very personal and, and more enjoyable for us. 
and getting on that personal level with all the guests and learning about their lives and where they've been and it's like a second family really. Yeah, my other family gets jealous that I call them my second family. <laughs> I, mean, I still talk to some guests that I sailed with two years ago because you just become friends, like that's what happens. They're people with a common interest. They don't need the lights and glamour of the big cruise ships. It's like a big family. Some passengers, like when they get off or they get really upset about it and they don't want to go home. It's exciting, it's picturesque, it's a wonderful experience. It's just perfect.